Hello, I'm Mr Downing and I'm your exams officer at Cantor King Solomon High School. As part of the Hear Our Voice initiative, I'm going to tell you about my experiences as a registered disabled person. Most of my day-to-day -day life, my disability has little bearing or impact on me or my work. Yes, there are limitations due to my condition, mainly having limited reach, including not being able to reach the tea bags that Mr Judge keeps placing on top of the fridge, and also not being able to walk far. I have a condition called mucusic type metaphysical chondrodysplasia, which is a form of dwarfism. Dwarfism is the collective term for people with short stature and encompasses many different types. We are not midgets, and to call someone with dwarfism a midget is an insult and is considered to be hurtful. A teacher at our school, out of total innocence, one queried the term with me as he believed that the official term to describe us was midgets. I had to politely correct him. In truth, few of us like labels. None of us want to be known as fat, stumpy, lanky, spotty, big nose, big eared, etc. My type of dwarfism is not really hereditary. Some are. Although ultimately it is the consequence of a rare chance of combined genes from both parents, but none of my family suffer from it and are all average height. My father was 5 foot 11 and one of my brothers is in the police force. I am a keen family historian and have traced my family back many generations and there is no record of anyone else in the family having any form of dwarfism. And yes, Mr Downing Senior really did marry Miss Uphill. Like anyone, my condition is due to a mutation. I am a mutant, but so are we all. None of us are exact clones and we all have slight mutations from our parents and siblings. My mother never understood this and always blamed herself for my condition, believing that she caused it by somehow doing something wrong during pregnancy. I, on the other hand, don't blame her or anyone. To me, this is no different to being tall, thin, ginger-haired, having a pointy nose or any other identifying trait. In fact, I think this condition has made me what I am today and has given me such traits as compassion, understanding, tolerance, a sense of humour and many others. Looking back on my life, I think I had a good, easy childhood and feel that my condition didn't have an adverse effect on me. Very early on I chose to play on my differences and to have a self-deprecating humour. I don't think this was ever some grand plan to avoid bullying or being treated differently. I just played on my strengths and capitalised on my differences. My parents also took advantage as I always looked noticeable young for my age. Even at the age of 10 plus I could easily pass as a half that age, which my parents took full advantage of when paying for tickets to attractions. Under fires would get him free, so I, I was always told when approaching the entrance to keep silent and not talk as that would give the game away. My parents were keen on me having a normal childhood and upbringing and fought hard to keep me in mainstream school. On reaching secondary age, both the council and local school wanted me to go to a special school for disabled students, but my mum fought hard to keep me in mainstream and I am pleased she did. To me, I had the same childhood as any other child. I seem to have been very lucky in my younger years and in, in avoiding any form of disability discrimination, especially when I was at school. From my perspective, the students accepted me the same as they would any other student. It wasn't until I reached adulthood did I start to encounter discrimination, and the older I got, the more intolerance I encountered. I, I guess I could no longer hide behind the protection of being a child. This included no one willing to employ me when I first saw, sought employment straight after school as I was registered disabled and my father said I should include that fact in my, all my job applications. Then later in life I would start encountering being shouted at in the street with people screaming, Hey midget! and mothers stopping their children to stop to point out the funny looking man walking past them. I've even had people stop me and take pictures of me on their iPhones. But none of this makes me unique, with many minority groups being exposed to this intolerance on a daily basis. An early boss of mine who came to this country from Nigeria told me of the day decades ago when he was strip searched by the police in the street because they couldn't understand how a black man was driving an expensive BMW. Obviously the intolerance of racial injustice over generations is headline news at the moment, but they aren't the only minority group to have a history of injustice and intolerance. I am disabled, and if I ever had the opportunity to relive my life again without it, 
I may well decline and live it all again as I have. You ultimately are a product of your experience. Everyone you meet and everything you do shapes and develops you. I'm proud to be disabled. Thank you for listening.